depends on uh, why you're setting the boundaries and what they are. I mean, it, it, things that stir the pot. I'm not sure I follow what you mean by. I think no, I'm mean, saying I'm stirring the pot. Oh, I'm okay. It oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, I was trying to figure out how that. So again, we can't place boundaries and have them there when we want them to work in our favor, mm -hmm. and then move them when we want everything else to, you know, play out like however. It's like um, if I offend you, mm -hmm. you know, then when you come back at me, all of a sudden I'm going to have a boundary like, oh, you can't come at me like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, I went, I went left the center with you, but now I got a boundary. I have an ethical or moral code all of a sudden that, oh, Kelly, you can't come talk to me like that in my space. See, they talk about me because I have a little bit of AD, ADHD, so I got. I want to come back to that. But what I want to ask you is, I want, I want to try to remember to come back, remind me to come back to this part. I like how you said we can come across and we can, you know, cross the boundary and come at them all crazy or whatever, but then when, it's, when they want to refer back to us, we cross and we come. How do we do that when we do that with our children? We can come, and I know I have been guilty of this before Jesus, during the process of Jesus, and still working on it with Jesus, where we have, I had took it for granted and talked real crazy to my kids. And then as they got older and, you know, when they start smelling themselves, stuff, when they get fly back, you know that 16 mark, 17 That's mark, when you got to take them to the floor, back mark, and then you want to talk like, well, you ain't going to be talking to me that way. Why is it that we feel like we, is that a boundary? Yes, when, we, when we cross over, we talk real just crazy, crazy to them. But as soon as they snap or even smack their lip or even act like they got an issue, with me, I, I used to just go and get them. Some people mm -hmm. might say, oh, well, Johnny, I, I really didn't appreciate that, Johnny. I was raised in a community, we, it, it wasn't Johnny. <laughs> Where's my shoe? Give me my, Monica, did we get hit with shoe, a dagger, broom, But again, we can talk, we, like you said, you come out the box, and then if they retaliate and talk real crazy, we draw on that line. Yeah, then we forget that if we come come at our kids like that, they've learned that behavior. Mm -hmm. So they become a product of that environment that we created for them. Mm -hmm. So when that when that environment raises back up at us, then we have an issue with it. It looks so pretty, mm -hmm. and we want to, you know, oh, you want to go there? Okay, which one you want, the left or the right? Mm -hmm. You know. It would be fair to say that we're, we too are a product of our environment. I came up in an environment that was hostile and there was a lot of fighting and, and all that, a lot of cussing. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. To me, that might be how I interpret love, as twisted as it may be. And that's how I'm so-called loving on my kids. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's manifested in our kids at school. Right. Absolutely. And we wonder why we get calls because Johnny, Ray right now is up there acting real crazy with her teacher, you know, but then we wonder why he keep getting put out or she keep getting put out of school. Is that a boundary cross too that they watched us do and they picked it up and actually transferred that to school and actually they're breaking, crossing all kind of boundaries with disrespecting their teachers? Absolutely, because they've gotten the message from us that it's okay. It's okay, mm -hmm. it's okay without consequences. And that self-entitlement comes up too because yes. we think because saying that and having them, you know how you walk them up into the wall, I'm going to talk to you any kind of way I want to talk to you. When I get done talking to you, I talk to you again and I'm going to talk to you again. That's how we do. Am I lying? That's how we do. And, and we also use the one, I bought you into this world. And I'll take, and I'll take you out. <laughs> Okay, if he ain't married me in two years, I, 
I'm, 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 I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Yeah, but then it comes to 10 years, and you're still saying, okay, well, next year. That's crossing that line. So should we, even, should we even mention it? When should we set, even if we're feeling like we, we, we're ready to make, to draw the line in the sand, should we even talk about it before we're actually ready? Or should we, you know how you keep threatening somebody? And if you know deep down inside, okay, I'm giving him 60 days. And you know on the 59th day, you know good well you ain't going nowhere. Should we communicate that boundary that we're trying to set if we don't really 100% believe it? We may be tired and we may want to get to that point, but if we're not absolutely there, should we even communicate? No, well, you're giving mixed messages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have no credibility. So a boundary Once the 60 days comes mm -hmm. and you don't follow through with that boundary, mm -hmm. you have no credibility. And then oh, they want to look at you like she did yeah, she was talking and things like that. So should we rather, if not at that point, start considering all of our options, including leaving? Should we just start within ourselves, just kind of, how do you do that with yourself? Self? <laughs> <laughs> should we not just, basically we should just keep it to ourselves until we're ready to make that actual concrete line in the sand, this is what it is, and you know within yourself that this is the move that I'm about to make. I think when you come to that point, there's no words. You're mm -hmm. just going to act. That's good. You know, when you really come to that resolve, it, you, it's not going to be about a discussion. I'm done. But That's I think so you true. have the discussion with yourself before. Yeah, you am I really right, willing to follow through with the consequences of what I'm about to do? Because there's always a possibility that I'm not going to get what I want. So therefore, mm -hmm. should we not, should a person that is at that point, should they even communicate it there? Because if they're not, if they're still in that considering, yeah. mm -hmm. then no. if they said sure it, if else. they go out and put their word out there and it falls through, then a person is not going to believe it. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean a man and a woman's relationship, just with our children, anything that you kind of set a boundary for. Yeah, you got to have some follow-through and some follow-up. Is it possible to have a healthy relationship with someone that don't have any, any boundaries? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Somebody is going to be purely schizophrenic. <laughs> and I can't say that I would be one up for that kind of a roller coaster ride. Because it's enough to deal with me. <laughs> is it easier to set boundaries with those who, are, who we are already in relationship with versus someone new? Someone new. Person. Probably because there's no history. History there, there's no emotion, <laughs> yes. attachment, things like that. So yeah, so there probably is easier to set. And you would learn from some mistakes. Hopefully. <laughs> so let me ask you this question. Let's talk about boundaries within with our children as far as like our grown children that go off to get married, should mama, auntie, and cousins, or sisters, should we be in that? Like decision making, should should this person run back to mama and them and tell all the business, get everything stirred up, or should that person go back to their husband and say, mama said I should do this, and <laughs> my sister said, and they do it like this over there. If you want to get into <laughs> um, no. Um, at times, and I have um, a couple married sons, and I've always wanted daughters, but I raise them to be independent and to work out their relationships um, with their with their significant their spouse. I'll say, and and um, not come to me because if you come to me, I can say, well, we can pray. Let's pray. You know, I'm going to pray. I'm, I never really had them come to me and say, so and so's about to leave me, or I'm about to leave, or anything like that. They never come to me with their marital issues. Um, and sometimes I have to admit, sometimes I feel a little left out. I'm like, does anybody want to share anything with me? But then that's a good thing. I would prefer not to know because one thing I do know about relationships once you work through your mess, y'all all right. We, we Did you go downtown or, you know, what, you know? For the whole crew, we packing up the cars, we going over here fighting. Two days later, they booed up. 
scripture, Genesis 3. What about Genesis 27 when we're talking about Rebecca and the two sons, Jacob and uh, Esau, Esau, and how she got all up in the mix and devised that plan and, mm -hmm. and coerced um, Jacob into tricking the father into blessing him for the birthright mm -hmm. of, um, that rightfully belonged to Esau. And see, again, that mother all up in the mix, crossing lines and things like that. And then that ended up, the consequence of that, it caused a lot of family issues between the brothers. Um, hostile, you know, Esau was hostile for a while. Remember, he was sick. And it caused Jacob to leave, and he ended up becoming a victim of his own, you know, sometimes would go around, come around, and the same stuff that kind of what happened to him, he was dealt with the same way by his uncle. And then 2 Samuel 11, that David and Bathsheba situation. Let that son, he out there looking, she don't take a bath. Girl, can you ask somebody looking in your window while you take a bath? I wonder if Bathsheba know he was looking. You yeah, I wonder if she, if she knew looking up at the king. You thought she looked up at him. Her husband had been gone at war for a long time. <laughs>
over and over and over again. How do you, has it been 70 times seven? I, I don't know. I know that it's been quite a bit that she has shared um, that this person has done this, but how do we reestablish boundaries that have been? I think we always have to love the person, mm -hmm. and we have to forgive the person, and we have to get beyond that feeling like, I never want to see you again because every time I see you, it reminds me of what you did to me. Mm -hmm. Because, well, we're told to. You know, and if we expect God to forgive us and we sin over and over and over and over again, and mm -hmm. Jesus continues to cover our sins, then we have to go to the same, we have to go to the same place with, with that person. Now, I don't think that means that we have to give her our new social security no, number. No, mm -mm. Or leave mm -mm. that person alone in our home. Or my or pocket that person, or my person be right, right up here. Exactly. I mean, it, you, it, is it okay to watch them? <laughs> I be watching it, Monica. You know, I be thinking everybody's stealing. Oh, they just stole. I, I'm gonna let something be moved. I be like, somebody just stole. But yeah, so you're saying basically what we would say to her is, I forgive you, I love you, and don't come to my house. No, I mean, or maybe some of that has to be reestablished slowly. We don't just jump right back into there. I mean, maybe the boundary before might have been where we could sit right here. Maybe now. You might have to sit over there for a minute, and then every time that we might have an encounter or whatever, maybe I can bring you closer and closer, but right now, you ain't right here. You way down, you gotta be way down there. You on the porch. Yeah, and I think the key to mm -hmm. that is really being prayerful mm -hmm. and, and seeking God for direction because he gives us our mind, but he gives us the Holy Spirit right. as our helper. Mm -hmm. And um, if we are seeking him first, mm -hmm. then the love is going to abound. Forgiveness is a huge part of it. And then, like you said, slowly. You know, if you breach trust, you just don't gain it overnight. Right. It's like, I don't know that you can handle that again. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think you have that conversation with me. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you need to tell us where we're at now. You know, I have forgiven you. I love you. But I'm just not there yet to allow you to just come back the way you used to be. We need to work on this. So let's start by requires us to have coffee with them and, and invite them into our home and so forth. I'm not sure it requires that, but we still need to love them, forgive them, and let that aim go. And as we're wrapping up, I want to leave with this. The same way that we have crossed many boundaries in our lives with Christ, some of the things that we have done, some if we just look back over our shoulders, we have seen some things, we have been some hot messes ourselves, but Christ continues through our repentance. Yes. He continues to allow us to come on yes. back in. Amen. So next time you're thinking, how can I forgive or how can I, what boundaries do I need to establish? Look back over your shoulder and thank Jesus that yes. he has allowed us over and over yes. and over yes. again.